Leading off the first for the Springfield Cardinals, second baseman number 21, Tommy Edmund. Welcome back to One Oak Field as we get underway in this afternoon game here at downtown Tulsa. Tommy Edmond leading it off for the Springfield Cardinals facing Logan Balkum, a former driller who has been signed by the Los Angeles Dodgers organization out of the Atlantic League. And Balkum is facing Tommy Edmond, Ramon Urias, and Randy Rosarina here in the first inning. And the count is two balls and two strikes to Edmond who's a 268 hitter batting left-handed. We will get you the Tulsa batting order in just a moment or two as we'll finish out our YMCA of Greater Tulsa starting lineups. YMCA is the official workout facility of the Drillers. And there's a check swing on the 2-2 pitch. It's in the dirt and racing toward first base is Edmund. The throw by Marte, the catcher, is just in time to get him. So that is a strikeout by Edmund. Balcom. With the strikeout of Edmond on the 2-2 pitch, a breaking ball in the dirt, and Marte had to scramble to his right, the driller's catcher, and throw to Peter O'Brien at first base, just barely able to get him at first, and it is a swinging strikeout, 2-3 on the putout. And Urias is the batter, Ramon Urias. 368 hitter, right-handed batter. Here's the pitch fouled off to the left side, and that one smacked right in front of the Saint, the uh, Cardinals dugout over there on the left side the Springfield Cardinals had to scatter a little bit as that one went up against the rail on the left side right hand there Logan Balkum the starting pitcher for the drillers six foot two 200 pounds out of Lubbock Texas and he misses with that pitch and it's one and one originally a 2010 draftee of the Dodgers number 17 17th round pick Twenty nine year old veteran right hander Logan Balkum. Here's the pitch swing and a miss. Some sort of breaking ball and Urias is totally fooled. OK defensively for the drillers Hamlet Marte is the catcher Peter O'Brien at first Angelo Mora at second Mike Ahmed is the shortstop Connor Joe at third Zach Rex in left DJ Peters in center Luke Rayley is the right fielder. Here's the one two pitch breaking ball low. And it's two balls and two strikes to Ramon Urias. 368 hitter. Right handed hitting third baseman. Here's the right handers pitch swing and a foul clipped off to the right side and into the seats. Two balls, two strikes to Urias. Home plate umpire is Jeff Gorman. At first is Tyler Olson. Malachi Moore at third base. No score early. Top of the first inning. A delay of about one hour and uh, 27 minutes. Swing and a pop up on the right side. Playable for Mora, the second baseman. Makes the catch. Two down here in the first inning, and Randy Oroz Arena is the hitter. The left fielder for Springfield. 364 hitter. Number 12, Randy Oroz Arena. Young man out of Havana, Cuba. Nine runs scored, a double, no triples, three home runs, 12 RBIs. Tulsa coming in, 20 and 17 overall. 20 and 17 here in the first half season. Springfield 19 and 18 in the bunched up North Division. There's a fastball in there for a strike out or third. No balls, one strike. Right hander's delivery missed inside. One ball, one strike. 
Balkum signed by the Dodgers from the Sugarland Skeeters. Here's a swing and a line drive down the right field line. That's a base hit. It drops in fair territory. Raley gets over there and grabs it, bobbles it for a second, but that was right down the line, and Rosarina never stopped on his way to second base. And that'll be a double. It's going to be a tough play for Raley to wheel over there and scoop it up and throw to second to get a Rosarina. So it goes in the books as a double, his second of the year, and he's in scoring position here for Springfield in the first inning. A Rosarina, by the way, was on a seven-game hit streak, so now he's on an eight-gamer. And here's Lane Thomas, the cleanup hitter, a right-handed hitting center fielder, batting 240. Balkum with the right-handed pitch fouled off the body of the hitter. Foul ball for a count of 0-1. We mentioned that Balkum comes to Tulsa from the Sugarland Skeeters of the Atlantic League. Pitched in college at UT Arlington. At Sugarland, he was 1-1 one one with a 6.75 ERA, but had pitched in only three games. He's 29 years old. Here's the right-handers pitch a little bit low. One ball, one strike. He has spent parts of five seasons at uh, AAA, in the AAA, le- at the AAA level. From the set, Balkum with the pitch, swinging a high pop-up off to the right side, peeling out of play. Lane Thomas, as we mentioned, is a 240 hitter, 23 runs, eight doubles, no triples, eight home runs, 22 RBIs, the eight home runs ties him for the team leadership. Here's the set by Balkum. And the one-two pitch check swing. Did he go around? He did not, according to first base umpire Tyler Olson. Let me correct that on the home run total by Thomas. His eight home runs is second on the team. Victor Roach leads the team with 11. So the count is two balls and two strikes to Thomas. Who has struggled a little bit recently. He's won for his last 13 over five games. No score in the game. We're in the top of the first inning. Runner at second, two outs. Balkum sets at the chest and brings the right-handed pitch outside and low. Now it's three balls and two strikes. Last year, Balkum pitched for El Paso and for Nashville, both those teams in the PCL, Triple A. Had 36 total appearances. All as a reliever. Here's a swing and a drive toward right field and deep. Racing back, Raley on the run. Makes the catch in front of the warning track. That'll do it for the Springfield first inning. No runs, one hit, no errors, one left. And at the end of one half inning, it's Springfield nothing. And the Drillers coming to the plates. <clears throat> at third base, number three, Ramon Maria. Start stop, number 23, Mundo Sosa. Blake Sinkin, number 21, Tommy Edmonds. At first base, number 37, Luke Dijkstra. The catcher. Bottom half of the first inning, and the Drillers will have this batting order as penciled in by manager Scott Hennessy. Luke Rayleigh will lead it off and play right. DJ Peters bats second, plays center field. Connor Joe is the third baseman, hitting third. Zach Rex playing left field is in cleanup. It'll be Angelo Mora at second base, hitting fifth. Peter O'Brien. At first base, hitting in the number six spot. Mike Ahmed is the shortstop, hitting seventh. Hamlet Marte batting eighth and catching. And Logan Balkum is the starting pitcher, batting ninth. Facing the uh, Tulsa lineup, facing Ryan Helsley, who pumps in a strike in the outside corner, corner with his first pitch to Raley. Helsley is a young man from Cookson, Oklahoma, Tahlequah area, and went to Northeastern State in Tahlequah. 0-1 pitch, a swung on and driven toward right center field, toward the gap. Getsman, the right fielder to his right, and to his left is Thomas, and the center fielder Thomas takes charge and makes the catch. One down to the first inning, D.J. Peters, the hitter. Center fielder, number 31, D.J. Peters. Peters, 282 on the year. 24 runs, five doubles, a triple, tied for the team lead with eight home runs. 
and 20 RBIs. Ryan Helsley is six foot two, 215 pounds. Fifth round pick for the Cardinals back in 2015. Zings a fastball high and tight to the angular DJ Peters. Peters on a four game hitting streak. No score in the game, bottom of the first. Right handers pitch, check swing, and that fastball just misses outside. Helsley has a fastball, a couple of different, you know, the two seam and the four seam fastballs. A cut fastball, a curve, and a changeup. Here's the pitch, swing and a miss, one and two. Right handed hitting Peters deep in the box, slightly open stance. Here comes the one two swing and a miss. Sorry, that is the two one pitch swing and a miss for a two two count. Your bus is here. Two balls, two strikes to Peters. Who is it in eight out of nine games? Here's the two two swing and a foul straight back. The count remains at two balls and two strikes. DJ Peters has become a fan favorite here at Tulsa. You know, he's such a such a big guy. Six foot six, 225 pounds out of Glendora, California. There's a pitch high for a ball, and I can't think of anything other than when I see number 31 and a guy six foot five or six foot six. Can't think of anybody except for Dave Winfield. Same number. Hall of Famer. 3 2 pitch. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. So Helsley gets his first strikeout. Two outs in the Drillers' first inning, and Connor Joe is the hitter. Joe was the hero last night, but the game winner with the bases loaded, nobody out. The infield in, wrapped the base hit through the infield to score the game winner in Tulsa's 8 7 victory. Connor is ninth in the league in hitting at 315. 19 runs, six doubles, a triple, seven home runs, 16 RBIs for the veteran right hander. Here's the pitch, swing and a high sky pop up, right side foul territory. Dykstra, the first baseman over, and he looks at it, hit right on top of the dugout. Defensively for the Cardinals, Chris Chinea. Is the catcher Luke Dykstra at first, Tommy Edmond at second, and Mundo Sosa is the shortstop. Ramon Urias at third. Randy Ariz, uh, Rosarina is in left. Lane Thomas in center, and Brandon Getzman in right. No score in the game. Bottom of the first inning, and that's a pitch in there for a strike on the outer third. 0 and 2 now to Connor Joe. Right-handed hitter has a very open stance, but then he closes it down as the pitch approaches. There's a pitch in the dirt, one and two. Well, Joe does have the seven home runs this year, which is third on the team. One ball, two strikes. Here comes the delivery, a fastball fouled straight back, so he stays alive. And Connor, you know, after you see the six foot five, six foot six DJ Peters up there, Connor Joe gets up there and looks like a little dude. But he is, he is six foot, 205. One ball, two strikes. Here's the right hander's pitch, swung on and hit high in the air. Straight away center field. Thomas, the center fielder, waits and makes the catch. And the inning is over. One, two, three inning for Ryan Helsley. We go to the second. The score is Tulsa nothing, Springfield nothing. Today's broadcast is being brought to you from the Pepsi broadcast booth here at beautiful 1 0 Field. Pepsi, the official soft drink of Drillers Baseball. Bruce Howard in for Dennis Higgins and Delighted to have you along here on this Wednesday afternoon of Drillers Baseball. Edmundo Sosa, Grandin Getzman, and Chris Chinea. The three hitters scheduled here in the second inning and against uh, Logan Balkan. 
right handers pitch is a fastball tails inside one and oh. From the stretch position. Balkum with the delivery swing and a drive toward left field high in the air but Rex is waiting for it the left fielder makes the catch. One down in the second and Brandon Getzman is the hitter. Right Getzman did not have any home Getzman. runs this year for Springfield coming into last night's game. After last night's game after he hit an opposite field home run and then crunched one into the left center field seats he has two home runs and that big clutch two out two strike home run last night turned a 7-4 apparent Tulsa victory into a 7-7 tie in the top of the ninth inning. He fouls off the first pitch. And so that clutch base hit sent the game to the bottom of the ninth where Connor Joe could be the hero and get the game winning hit for Tulsa. There's a pitch in there for a strike inside corner and it's no balls and two strikes. Getzman has played 15 games for Springfield got his first two home runs last night overall though just hitting 170 two home runs six RBIs pitch misses inside one ball two strikes Getsman big right handed hitter here's the delivery swing and a miss went hacking after a breaking pitch in the dirt Scooped up by Marte, who throws to first in time. Second strikeout for Balkum. Two down here in the Springfield second inning. The batter is Chris Chenea. Chenea hitting 258. Eight runs, five doubles, no triples, three home runs, 10 RBIs. Balkum pitching from the stretch and throws a fastball strike outside corner. In the minor leagues through the years, Logan Balkum, 340 appearances, just 13 starts. Here's the pitch way outside for a ball. However, and, and we were looking up the records last night. He has started all three games for the Sugarland Skeeters in the Atlantic League prior to coming to Tulsa so he's he has stretched his pitch count out a little here's the pitch swinging a high fly ball toward shallow center coming on as Peters on the run and makes the catch and the inning is over one two three inning for Balkan and we go to the bottom of the second inning Tulsa nothing Springfield nothing make sure you guys check them out hey Reach fans if you're looking for a great way to experience your next here Brewers game check time. out the Bush scoreboard bar it provides a unique way to watch the game while also enjoying an ice cold bush or bush light. Beer that's as crisp and cold as a mountain stream. Drillers baseball and the bush scoreboard bar. Perfect combination. Well, the temperature is very reasonable here today. 71 degrees at first pitch. And we go to the bottom of the second inning in a scoreless game. The only base hit was engineered by Springfield. We go to the bottom of the second inning. Zach Rex, Angelo Moore, and Peter O'Brien for Tulsa against Oklahoma native Ryan Helsley. Here's the right-handed pitch outside and high for a ball to Rex, who has played just five games for the Drillers, but he's done well. Left-handed hitter playing in left field today for Tulsa. 533 is a hitter, 8 for 15. Here's the pitch. Swing and a foul tip at the plate. One and one now to Zach Rex. And Rex already in his five games has scored seven runs. Two doubles, no other extra base hits, a couple of RBIs. Played five games at Rancho Cucamonga in Class A and hit 533 there. Wind. Here's the 1 1 pitch. Swing and a line drive shot to the right side and into the first row foul. Mm. One ball, two strikes. Just looking over there, making sure nobody got hurt. Might have, might have hit somebody down there, and that's why if you're in the front row or Exposed to any foul ball, you got to be alert. Here's the pitch high for a ball. One ball, two strikes. 
to Zach Rex R E K S. That's how you spell his last name. The wind by the righty and the 2 2 delivery. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Second strikeout for Helsley. Earlier this year against Tulsa, Helsley, second baseman, number 18, Angelo Mora, was the winning pitcher in a 15 to 5 victory for Springfield. That was back on May 5th, not that long ago. He went five and two thirds innings pitched, had two walks and a season high 10 strikeouts. Out only four hits. Here's the pitch to the left handed swinging Mora, who tried to put it out on the street, swung and missed at a high fastball. 0 and 1 the count. 290 average for Angelo Mora. He's on a six game hitting streak. Here's the delivery swing and a high fly ball towards straightaway center. Thomas barely has to move, and the center fielder one hands it for the out. Two down in the second inning, and so far, Ryan Helsley, the young man from Cookson and Tahlequah. Is just breezing along. Number 35, Peter O'Brien. The wind by the wind by the right hander. The pitch to Peter O'Brien is high for a ball, and O'Brien is starting to get hot. He's on a five-game hitting streak. He's batting 138 on the season. Nine runs, two doubles, no triples, five home runs, 17 RBIs. Checks his swing on a pitch a little bit high, evidently. Two balls, no strikes. Helsley, the right hander, turns and brings the pitch. Check swing high and inside, 3 0. Oh. Of course, O'Brien, two nights ago on Monday evening, had the Dramatic eighth inning grand slam, the game winner for Tulsa as they rally from an 8 1 deficit to win the game 9 8. 3 0 pitch is right straight in there for a strike. 3 and 1. No score in the game. We're playing in the bottom half of the second inning. Two outs, nobody aboard for Tulsa. Drillers have yet to get, get a man on board. Helsley kicks and the right hander brings it. Swing and a miss. Blew the fastball by him at 95 miles an hour. A little bit up in the zone, but probably was a strike. And now the count three and two. O'Brien hitting 316 in his five game hit streak. And there's a breaking ball. Looked like a slider in there for a strike. O'Brien knew it and he just turned and walked to the dugout. Strikeout number three for Helsley. He has breezed through the first two innings. Some pitchers duel so far. We head to the third. Springfield nothing. Tulsa nothing. Game as we head now to the third inning. Luke Dykstra, Ryan Helsley, the pitcher, and then top of the order for Tommy Edmond against right-hander Logan Balkum of the Drillers. No runs, one hit for Springfield. No runs, no hits for the Drillers. Neither team has made an error. Tulsa's won the first two games of the series. This is game three of four. Here's the pitch. Hard hit ground ball in the hole. Fielded by Ahmed. Long, high throw to first, and it's wild. Hard play for shortstop Ahmed. He had to go deep in the hole and had to jump up in the air. That was that famous, if you will, jump throw. Number 26, Ryan Helsley. And heading to second base is Dykstra. So it's a base hit and an error as the throw was wild and went out of play. So Dykstra gets second. And the batter is Helsley. The pitcher, of course, squares around to bunt, takes a ball. Balkum's pitch is bunted down the first baseline foul. So give Dykstra a hit. 
give Ahmed an error, and Ahmed made a nice play to get to the ball. But the jump throw is very difficult. Deep in the hole to make an accurate throw. Here's the 1-1 one -one pitch. Swings and pops it up on the right side. Foul territory for Peter O'Brien, the driller's first baseman, makes the catch. So Helsley, who had gone one for four so far this year as a hitter, pops out in foul, foul territory. Yeah, the, the, you know, the guy that made the jump throw famous Second baseman. would be Derek Jeter, of course, the great shortstop of the Yankees. And he used to make it look easy. A very difficult throw. So runner at second, one down, top of the order, Tommy Edmond in the scoreless game. Tulsa and Springfield in game three. Pretty good lead over there by Dykstra at second. The set by Balkum, and here's the pitch outside for a ball. One ball, no strikes. Edmonds struck out swinging in the first, and he swings and hits a high drive down the right field line deep, and it is out of the park but foul. For a moment, it looked like that might just straighten out enough for a home run, but it did curl at the end. And Tommy Edmond will have to go back after being denied his second home run of the year. One ball, one strike to the left-handed hitting first baseman. The set by Balkum. Here's the right-hander's pitch, swinging a pop-up to the left side. That one sails out into the outfield for Rex. Rex drifting to his right, and the left fielder makes the catch. Well, off the bat, it looked like a pop-up shallow left, and it carried to fairly deep left field. Rex made the easy play. Two down, and the hitter is Urias. There isn't a whole lot of wind right now. Slight breeze blowing out toward left center. Balkum, by the way, as we've mentioned, had three starts for the uh, Sugarland Skeeters of the Atlantic League and did get his pitch total up in his last outing to 72. Here's the pitch, inside corner strike. And you see, if you're watching on TulsaDrillers.com or MILB.com, you know, he's pitching from the stretch all the time. And he has largely been a reliever his entire career. 0-1 pitch, inside for a ball, skipped away from Marte, but no advancement. One ball, one strike. We'd mentioned 340 appearances in his career in minor league ball for Balkum and 13 starts. But he did have 72 pitches in his last outing, which was last Thursday. For the Skeeters, his last start in affiliated ball was way back in September of 1916, a couple of years, uh, 2016, a couple of years ago. Swinging a ground ball to shortstop. Ahmed has it, slings it across in time for the out, and that is it. In the third inning, no runs, one hit, one error, and one left. And at the end the of uh, two and one half innings of play, Tulsa nothing, Springfield nothing. Six point nine. Leading off the driller, shortstop number one, Mike. No score in this game as Tulsa comes to the plate in the bottom half of the third inning. Mike Ahmed, Hamlet Marte, and Logan Balkum against right-hander Ryan Hillsley, who has set down the first six. Here's the pitch, a fastball swung on and hit high in the air down the right field line, twisting foul. Dykstra, the first baseman, Getzman, the right fielder, into foul territory, and Getzman lunges out and makes a nice one-hand grab. Wow. Getzman never gave up on it and continued to motor and made a very good defensive play. That was not easy. Is that ball twisting away from the foul line? And Getzman just never gave up on it, knew where he was, reached out and made the basket catch. One down in the third, Hamlet Marte the batter. Marte one for five. 
his brief time with the drillers. And the first pitch pumped in there for a strike. This is only his second game for Marte, the right handed hitting catcher. The 0 1 delivery. It's fouled off the catcher. Chenea briefly, briefly bends over. Looks like it got him on the upper part of his right shoulder. There are some areas that are exposed. A lot of times it's arm, shoulder, that sort of thing. Chenea circling his arm around a little bit. Appears to be okay and ready to go. The line of the 0 2 pitch, high for a ball. One ball, two strikes. Marte, the number eight hitter, scoreless game here in the bottom of the third. There's a swing and a bouncing ball left side. And it is foul. Scott Hennessy in the third base coaching box, the manager for the Drillers. Got his hands on that one and tossed it into the crowd. One ball, two strikes to Marte. Here's the pitch. Ooh, close but outside. Elliot Elementary, Elliot Elementary, your bus is here. Balkum is on deck, the pitcher. Scoreless game, only a couple of base hits in the contest, both owned by Springfield. In the bottom of the third inning. 2 2 pitch, swing and a miss. Chewed him up with a slider on the outside corner. A good pitch by Ryan Helsley. Fourth strikeout for Helsley. Pitcher, and we had mentioned he's from Northeastern. Northeastern State in Tahlequah, and as a sophomore, he struck out 95 in 63 and two thirds innings. And for obvious reasons, the Cardinals were interested. Here's the pitch. There's a swing and a line drive left field on the run, and a Rosarina makes a nice sliding catch. Logan Balkum hit the ball hard. The Drillers pitcher on the first pitch. Sailed it into left field and a Rosarina made the grab. And so Helsley has retired the first nine. And we head to the fourth inning. Tulsa nothing. Uh, that's right, Drill Bill. It's, it's a scoreless game between the drillers and Springfield. Top half of the fourth inning. Springfield will bring up three, four, and five. Randy or Rosarina, who just made a nice catch. Lane Thomas and Edmundo Sosa. To face Logan Balkum, who nearly had Tulsa's first base hit. Starting pitcher in that number nine hole hitting wise. Hit a sinking liner to left field that was caught by Oroz Arena. That's been the closest thing to a hit for the drillers in this game. And it's a 0-0 game with two hits in the books for Springfield off the bats of Oroz Arena and Luke Dykstra. Find yourself in the Lost Kingdom at the Tulsa Zoo. The newest exhibit complex is home to some of Asia's rarest and most elusive species, including the Malayan tigers, snow leopards, and uh, Komodo dragons. Learn more at TulsaZoo.org. That's TulsaZoo.org. The right-handed hitting Randy Rosarina is the batter. Had a double in the first, his second of the season. Came into the game hitting 364, and now he has an eight-game hit streak. Balkum's pitch is inside for a ball. Rosarina had a three-run home run last night, which drew Springfield to a 7-4 deficit. And that helped spark Springfield's comeback where they tied the game in the ninth, only to see the Drillers win it in the bottom. A swing and a foul straight back, and now it is one ball, one strike to a Rosarina. Logan Balkum has now thrown 41 pitches. Here's the right-hander's delivery. Swung on and driven deep to left field, way back, and that ball is gone. Home run. A Rose Arena hits his fourth home run of the season, his third against Drillers pitching, and he gives Springfield a 1-0 lead.
Randy Arozarena now has a double and a home run for Springfield. And he turned that pitch around and hit it into the Bush Terrace. Lane Thomas, the hitter. Balkum from the stretch, and here's the pitch bounced foul left side. Balls one strike. Here's the right hander's pitch. Another drive to deep left field. Hit deep. Well, and that one farther and gone behind the Bush Terrace. Lane Thomas follows up the Arena home run with another solo shot. 2 nothing Springfield. On two long home runs to left field. Off of Logan Balkum. Well, if the first one was a no doubter and it was pretty well gone, the second one was even more so. Man. Now here's the batter, Sosa, and takes a strike. Two nothing Springfield. Here's another drive to left field. Going back, Rex. Rex is at the wall, le leaping up and makes the catch. Right at the wall as Sosa put a charge into that one. And twisting and turning, Zach Rex made a very fine play. One down, and the batter is Grandin gets me. If you're watching on MILB.com, you see the fine play by Zach Rex. Not an easy play because that ball was a rocket. The first pitch is a strike to Getzman, who struck out swinging in the second inning. One out, two in here in the fourth inning for Springfield. They lead it 2 0. There's a swing and a miss by Getzman. And it's 0 2 on a little bit of a wrinkle there by Logan Balkan. Getzman had the big home run last night. Here's the pitch in the dirt and outside one and two with an 81 mile an hour breaking ball. Four base hits now for Springfield. Cardinals looking to capture game three here. Tomorrow night the two teams will finish out the four game set with a 7.05 first pitch. Mitchell White pitches for Tulsa against Connor Green of Springfield. 1 2 pitch outside and low ball 2 2 and 2 to the right handed hitting Getzman. We had mentioned Balkum had not been much of a starter had not started many games his last start coming in 2016 for Oklahoma City. 2 2 pitch swing and a bouncing ball to the left side Connor Joe charges it scoops it up throw to first he just barely got him two down. Chenea, the batter, who flied to center his first time up. The last appearance in affiliated baseball for Balkum before today was September 3rd, last fall, or last summer, if you will, late summer, for Nashville, the Sounds in AAA, where he was a winning pitcher in a game against the New Orleans Baby Cakes. Yes, that's what they call the New Orleans team. Baby cakes. I know there's a thing, you know, called the king cake during Mardi Gras and down in the New Orleans area. Here's the pitch, swing and a foul off to the right side. But New Orleans is called the baby cakes. I guess a take off of the king cake. Now the king cake from Cajun country is a very sweet confection that is most prevalent during Mardi Gras and there's always a, a, a little plastic baby doll in the cake. There's a pitch in there for a strike. And whoever cuts the piece that has the little baby in there has to buy the next one. Chenea the batter has a one and two count. 
Here's the delivery swing and a foul sliced off to the right not a play. And speaking of strange nicknames you know the. The team that Logan Balkum Just got through pitching for in the independent Atlantic League the Sugarland Skeeters. And yes indeed it, the mascot is a mosquito. Here's a swing and a high fly ball medium depth center DJ Peters drifting back and makes the catch and the inning is over. In the fourth two runs on two base hits two home runs but they're both solo shots no errors and nobody left. And at the end of three and one half innings of play at Springfield two Tulsa nothing. Leading off the drillers for right fielder number 11 Luke Tulsa drillers down by a score of two to nothing. We head now to the bottom of the fourth inning top third of the order Luke Rayley DJ Peters and Connor Joe. Facing off against right hander Ryan Helsley. And here's the pitch high and outside for a ball. Bruce Howard in for Dennis Higgins and delighted to have you along here on an afternoon ball game. Here's a swing and a miss by Rayley. One ball, one strike. Right-handers wind and pitch. That one sails high and outside. Two balls, one strike. Drillers have yet to get a base runner here. We're in the fourth. Rayleigh, the left-handed hitter, hits a one or two hopper right to the second baseman. Edmund fields it, fires to first in time. One down in the fourth, and DJ Peters, the hitter. Center fielder number 31, DJ Peters struck out swinging in the first inning. So Helsley has retired the first 10. And if you're looking at kind of stats and you know that kind of thing, and you start wondering about how many pitches and how many pitches will be allowed and that sort of, you know, you always have that in minor league baseball now. And there's a swing and a miss by Peters. Coming into this inning. Helsley had thrown. Well coming into this at bat he thrown 40 pitches so not too bad. But here's a swing and a miss. Pick your part. Bring your tickets to the North Peoria location for free admission. Peters struck out swinging in the first. Two nothing in favor of Springfield. Right hander winds and here's the delivery breaking ball inside corner struck him out on the 0 2 Peters caught looking two down here in the fourth inning and Helsley now has five strikeouts no walks and he is dealing now. Third base Connor Joe the batter three flight out to center field in the first inning and we mentioned this earlier the, the closest thing to a base hit for the drillers has been the sinking liner by. Logan Balkum, the pitcher who hit the first pitch and, and hit it fairly well. The delivery, a check swing by Joe. They appeal. First base umpire Olson said no swing. The drillers coming into the game at 20 and 17 in first place in the north. 12 and 4 home record. There's a swing and a miss and a slider low and away, one and one. And ever since midway through last year, Scott Hennessy was named as the manager of the Drillers. The Drillers have had an unbelievable home record. Here's the 1 1. A little bit high for a ball, 2 and 1. I have to check with Barry Lewis of the Tulsa World on this, but I think they won something like their first 15 home games under Hennessy. And went something like 20 and 2 at home under his tutelage in the second half of the year, something like that. The pitch goes inside and low. Now it's 3 and 1. And then this year, 12 and 4 at home under Scott Henderson. 
The wind, here comes the 3 1. High for ball four. First base runner for Tulsa is a walk to Connor Joe with two outs here in the fourth inning and Springfield leading 2 0. Zach Rex, the batter. That was the uh, really the first time, or one of the rare times, that Helsley has gone to a three ball count. Not a whole lot of pitches, not a whole lot of three two foul off six pitches and then strike a guy out situations. And now here's Rex who struck out swinging in the second. First base runner for Tulsa. Connor Joe at first. Two outs in the fourth inning. Rex, a left handed hitter deep in the box, straight away stands. Here's the pitch, late swing and a foul straight back. The outfield for the Cardinals of Springfield very much shaded the other way. They expect him to push the ball to the opposite field. They're playing him like he's a right handed pole hitter. I mean, the right fielder, Getzman, is 70 feet off the line. Center fielder Thomas heavily shaded toward left center. And a Rosarina is very deep and perhaps 25 feet off the line and left. I mean, he, you talk about a deep and spread out outfield. Goodness. Checked on a swing and the count goes to one and one to Rex. And now they move a Rosarina a little bit off the line. Maybe they thought he was too far toward that left field line. Throw to first. Diving back in is Connor Joe. And not that anybody on the Springfield side would be listening to the broadcast, but it was right after I finished saying that, all of a sudden, Rosarina starts walking toward left center field. The left fielder now is about 45 feet off the line. Here's the 1 1 pitch in there for a strike. 1 and 2 to the left handed hitting Rex. Ryan Helsley in his last start on Friday at Arkansas was the losing pitcher in a two to one defeat, but pitched fairly well. Six innings, five hits and two runs, three walks, four strikeouts. He has not gone beyond six innings. So far this year as a starter. Here's the pitch swing and a foul ladled off to the left side that one screaming into the crowd. Still one ball and two strikes to Rex. Angelo Mora is on deck. Two outs, one on here for the Drillers in the bottom half of the fourth. Tulsa trailing 2 0. Rex again digging in deep in the box. The set by Helsley. And another 1 2 pitch in the dirt. Blocked nicely by Chenea. Two balls, two strikes to Rex. Rex did not play last night, but was two for four on Monday evening. Joe with a small lead at first. Here's the check by Helsley. And the right hander's delivery. Swing and a line drive up the middle base hit. First base hit for the drillers. Rounding second is Joe, heading for third. And the throw comes into second base. And now they throw back to first and they throw it away to the right side near the dugout. Coming into score is Joe. And heading to second base is Rex. So Rex had the base hit up the middle. And then on the throwing air by the shortstop Sosa. The run comes in to score. Second base. And racing to second base. The air goes to the shortstop. And the drillers have made it two to one. E6. To allow the run to score and allow the runner to get to second. Here's more of the batter. So the drillers get the first, their first hit and their first run on the same play, aided by an error committed by Sosa, the shortstop. And Sosa had to, you know, the, the guy that really made the play was Connor Joe, who hustled around first to third on a base hit up the middle. Here's Mora. 
And the pitch outside for a ball. And the reason I say that is Joe could have played it station to station. Instead, he hustled around first to third. And Lane Thomas, the center fielder, rushed in on the ball, threw, you know, threw it into second base. And because there was a play going on, the throw came into second. Rex at first. Here's a swing and a high drive, deep center, but not deep enough. And Thomas will wait and makes the play, and the inning is over. We'll talk about the play by Connor Joe in a moment when we come back, but the drillers are on the board. Putting on the new inning first baseman, number 37, Luke Dykstra. Now the Tulsa drillers get a run on the board. Make it a two to one score. It's an unearned run, but it is a run, and we head to the fifth inning. Springfield will bring up Luke Dykstra, Ryan Helsley, the pitcher, and then Tommy Edmond. Dykstra singled in the third inning. Here's the pitch, check swing, and it is outside. They appeal to the base umpire, no swing. And Dykstra got on with a base hit in the hole. Ahmed tried to make the jump throw from shortstop and was wide and wild. There's a number off the end of the bat, a ground ball on the right side, scooped up by Moore, the second baseman who fires the first in time, one down. And the only error by the drillers in this game was by Ahmed when he tried to make that jump throw and threw wildly, and it actually went out of play for an error to allow Dykstra on his base hit to go to second. At any rate, that error didn't hurt Logan Balkum, the Tulsa starter as opposed to the shortstop error by Sosa last half inning, which did allow a run to score, and was harmful to Ryan Helsley. And the first pitch to Helsley is in there for a strike, 0 and one to the right-handed hitting pitcher, who fouled out to the first baseman his first time up. And another pitch in there for a strike, 0 and two. Two to one, Springfield here in the fifth. Balkum's pitch is swung on and hit high in the air to left field. Drifting back as Rex. Rex waits and makes the catch two down. So to this point, this is a nice recovery by Logan Balkum. He allowed the back-to-back -back home runs to lead off the fourth inning of Rosarina and Thomas. And he has since set down five in a row. And here's Tommy Edmond at the top of the order. It was 0 for 2. Two runs, four hits, and an error for Springfield. One run, one hit, one error for the Drillers. Here's the right-hander's pitch, a little bit low, and squaring the bunt was Edmund, and he took a ball. And despite the fact that we had, if you want to call it inclement weather, very threatening weather, if you will, which delayed the game by an hour and a half at the beginning, despite that, you know, you, Put that aside, and it's been a very enjoyable weather day. There's a ground ball to shortstop, scooped up by uh, the shortstop Ahmed, but his throw was wild at first base. First of all, the ground ball was fairly routine to Ahmed on a couple of hops, and he juggled the fielding effort. Then he hurried the throw and threw it wide. Number three. And it is an error. Charge to Ahmed. His second of the game and his ninth of the season. Urias is the batter. Balkum, right-hander's pitch, is bunted in the air. And Balkum cannot make the play as he tried to lunge down and make the catch. The bunt was not a great one, but it turns out to be a base hit. So Urias with a bunt base hit, and he was certainly bunting for a base hit. He popped it up, and Balkum tried to rush in and make the play, lunging for a shoot top catch, and it just scuttled under his glove. But I'm not certain. It would have been a very close play had Balkum just played it on a hop. Would have been difficult to get Urias. So it goes in the books as a bunt base hit, and here's a Rosarina. Two outs, two on for 
Springfield leading two to one here in the top half of the fifth inning and what appeared to be a stress free inning for Balkum has all of a sudden turned it to a little bit of a labor here and now facing a guy that cracked him for a home run last time pitch in the dirt for ball one one and oh we had mentioned that Balkum played in the Atlantic League and played for Sugarland and you might be saying wait a minute Sugarland isn't that southwest of Houston if you were to say that you would be right the Atlantic League is mostly northeastern teams except for Sugarland there's a pitch outside and low for a ball it was blocked nicely by Marte so that's right the Sugarland Skeeters from South Texas are in the largely northeastern Atlantic League so travel is a nightmare I mean the teams in the Atlantic League are Lancaster Pennsylvania York Pennsylvania Southern Maryland Somerset New Jersey Long Island New Britain in the New England area here's the pitch ground ball to the left side scooped up by third baseman Connor Joe who elects not to throw but to tag out the runner at third and he does so and the inning is over in the fifth no runs one hit one error two left and at the end of four and one half innings of play, we're halfway home at Springfield 2, Tulsa 1. Bottom half of the fifth the inning, it is 2 to 1 in favor of Springfield. Leading it off will be Peter O'Brien. Hey, sports fans, after the game, be sure to swing by Osage Casino for food, fun, and excitement. Osage Casino offers dining, exciting gaming, and craft beers from one of Southwest's finest breweries, Nine Brand Brewing Company. Hit a home run every time at Osage Casino, Tulsa's downtown casino. Here's O'Brien who checks his swing but went around too far. On a 95 mile an hour fastball from Ryan Helsley. No balls, one strike to Peter O'Brien who struck out looking in the second inning. Two to one. Springfield with the lead here in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Here's the 0-1. Breaking ball fouled on the ground left side. Popped right over the bat boy over there just this side of the Springfield dugout. O'Brien has 12 RBIs in his last four games. Here comes the 0-2 delivery, fastball away. One ball, two strikes to Peter O'Brien. Mike Ahmed and then Hamlet Marte scheduled hitters. Here's the delivery. Checked his swing again. See, left hander warming up in the bullpen for the drillers. That looks to be Brian Moran. And we mentioned Balkum had gone 67, uh, I'm sorry, 72 pitches his last outing, but he's at 67 now. So that may be it for him. But he's done a nice job. There's a breaking ball, strike three. O'Brien, for the second time, has looked at a wrinkle on Shoot that two-strike pitch and is struck out by Ryan Helsley. Strikeout number six for Helsley. He has walked one. We're in the fifth inning, two to one. Springfield with the lead. The batter is Mike Ahmed. Fouled out to the right field on a good running catch by Getzman back in the third. And he takes the ball down low, 1 and 0. Helsley, the right hander. And the 1 0 delivery, swing and a miss. 1 and 1. Helsley is rated as the 22nd best prospect in the St. Louis organization. Comes in with a 2 and 2 record, 5.40 ERA at six starts this year. Probably a little higher walk total than they would like. 18 walks coming into this performance at 33 plus innings. But he does have 37 strikeouts. So again, he's got good stuff. As the pitch misses down low and outside, two and one to a bit. Helsley winds and the right hander brings it. Inside corner strike. Either a cutter or a slider on that one. Almost looked like a backup slider. Two and two now to admit. Right-handed hitter. 
Shortstop for the drillers. Deep in the box, slightly open stance. Here's the 2 2. Swinging a bouncing ball down the third base line. It is a fair ball behind the bag. Urias throw to first. Safe, he beat it out. Urias made a good backhand play on that one, which went right over the bag down that third base line. Catch the men beat it out. 19, By the time Urias threw the ball, he was well behind the bag and into foul territory. So that was a tough play on a well-placed ground ball by Ahmed. And now here's Hamlet Marte. To the stretch, Helsley. Here's the pitch. High for a ball. I'd have to ask Higgy this because have not had a chance to meet many of the driller players and Hamlet Marte is playing just his second game. There's a very unusual first name, Hamlet. Here's the set by Helsley and the pitch is in there for a strike. And of course the first question would be about the first name. And does it have any Shakespearean reference? And if your first name is Hamlet, are you really hard to have a shortened first name like Ham? I don't think so. Here's the pitch, swing and a miss. One and two. One ball, two strikes to the right handed hitter. Ellsley, right foot on the rubber, sets at the chest, and here's the pitch. Swing and a high pop, five, pop fly to the shallow right field side. Coming on, Getzman. Getzman, the right fielder, makes the catch. And now it's Logan Balkum. Was wondering if perhaps they might go with a pitch hitter at this point. But perhaps with Balkum coming to the plate, it may be that he'll go out and pitch the next half inning. We had mentioned, of course, that Moran is out in the bullpen warming up. Two to one, Springfield with the lead, bottom of the fifth inning. Here's the pitch, and that one's uh, in there for a strike. Balkum hit the first pitch, a soft liner to left field, almost got a base hit out of it. A Rosarina made a nice sliding catch back in the third inning. Two outs, one on for the drillers, down two to one. Here's the pitch, swing and a miss, 0-2. Helsley seeking his seventh strikeout. He had 10 against the drillers back on May 5th. The right-hander sets. The 0-2, swing a little roller up the middle, tough play. Getting it in the backhand is the second baseman, El Edmund, and Edmund slings it to first in time for the out. That one looked like might go to the shortstop, but second baseman Edmund made a nice play to cut it off. That ball was on the left side of the second base bag, but so slowly hit that Edmund, the second baseman, could get there, and that's it for the drillers in the fifth. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one left. And at the end of five innings of play, Springfield two, Tulsa one. The drillers are down two to one as we head to the top half of the sixth inning. Lane Thomas, Edmundo Sosa, and Grandin Getzman for Springfield. Two runs, five hits, one error for the Cardinals. One run, two hits, two errors for the drillers. Hey, Caraba's Italian Grill family bundles like classic spaghetti and meatballs, homemade lasagna. Just terrific and more with a choice of soup and salad and bread. Feed up to five starting at seven bucks a person for carryout only. Caraba's Italian worth talking about. 11021 East 71st Street in Tulsa. That's 11021 East 71st Street, Tulsa, Caraba's. Lane Thomas to lead it off. He's one for two with a home run. His solo shot in the fourth inning gave Springfield a two to nothing lead. That lead has since been sliced in half. And Balkum still out there and he misses inside for ball one. And not to beat the dead horse here, but the Atlantic League, which is where Balkum was most recently pitching, 
for the Sugarland Skeeters. They have all of those teams in the Northeast and then Sugarland near Houston. And I guess the, as I read the story, a pitch flies inside and the count is 2 0. Oh. Balkum and the rest of the Skeeters have to fly to the Northeast and play like nine or 12 game road trips before they could fly back to Sugarland. And then the other teams in the league would have to fly to Sugarland and play, I would assume, longer homestands for the Skeeters. But man, what a weird league. Here's a swing and a line drive. Left side, that floats in for a base hit. Softly hit liner by Thomas. He's two for three. And he leads off the sixth inning with a base hit. But we had mentioned all the cities in the Atlantic League and Lancaster and York and Maryland and team in New Jersey, Long Island. There's another team in that league called, simply put, Road Warriors. There's nothing else there except for Road Warriors. So I kind of looked that up and found out a little bit more about that. Sosa is the batter. Runner is going. Here's the pitch. Inside corner strike throw to second. Safe as he slides in. Lane Thomas has his seventh stolen base. He leads the team in that category and he's not been caught this year. And he's aboard at second. And looking up the Road Warriors in the Atlantic League, after getting past all of the, you know, Hell's Angels references and Mad Max and all that sort of stuff, <laughs> here's the pitch outside for a ball. Discover that the team called Road Warriors is a team that was supposed to was supposed to land in the Lehigh Valley area of Pennsylvania and ended up didn't work out. So the league owns the team and they play the entire season on the road. How about that? Sosa, the hitter, has a 1-1 count. Here's the pitch. Fouled away on the right side. High in the air and out of play. Now, there was a case in affiliated ball a few years ago where a team was on the road the entire year. I think it was the Hartford. I think they're called the Yard Goats. Double A team in the Eastern League. Hartford Yard Goats, I think, played an entire season on the road because their stadium was not ready. And I've seen that stadium since it's been finished. And it's a nice stadium. But they had to play an entire year on the road to get there. One ball, two strikes to Sosa. Here's the pitch in the dirt. Blocked nicely. Good job by Marte. And the runner at second base scampered off like he was going to go to third. And then Lane Thomas thought the better of it and went back to second base. Two balls, two strikes to Sosa. The score is 2-1 to one in favor of Springfield here in the sixth inning. Cardinals got back-to-back -back home runs in the fourth from a Rosarina and Thomas. And then the Drillers fought back with an unearned run in the bottom half of the fourth. Bouncing ball, third base way. Nice backhand stop by Joe. Straightens up, throws to first. He got him. What a play by Connor Joe on a hard hit ball down the third base line. And that was that was special because it was a hard backhand play. And he held the runner at third base as well. He had to scramble to get to the ball. And the best part was he got up. Didn't panic, made a good strong throw to first, and held the runner. One out, runner at second base, and Brandon Getzman is the batter. Two to one, Springfield here in the top half of the sixth. Here's the pitch inside corner strike. Getzman struck out swinging in the second, bounced out to third in the fourth. Balls one strike. Here's the set. And the right-hander's delivery is a breaking ball that missed inside. Moran, the left-hander, is up and warming again in the bullpen for the Drillers. Season series between Tulsa and Springfield is tied at three, this being the seventh ball game between the two. The 1-1 delivery, breaking ball strike. One and two. Good job by Balkum to keep. Getsman off balance. Now he has him set up with a 1 2 count. Balkum from the stretch. And the 1 2 delivery in the dirt. Blocked nicely, but the ball scoots away from the catcher, Marte. And heading to third is Thomas. He's in there safe. Marte blocked that ball nicely, but it rolled up toward the third base line, and that allowed. 
Lane Thomas to advance to third here with one out. So that's an important advancement because now the drillers bring their infield at least partially in with a two to one score in the sixth inning. In fact, they bring the infield all the way in and the count is two balls and two strikes from the stretch Balkum. The right handers pitch breaking ball in the dirt. Now it's three and two. On deck is Chenea. Another right handed hitter for the Cardinals. Getsman deep in the box. Slightly open stance. Here's the three two. It's a breaking ball strike three on the outer third. Great pitch by Balkum. Looked like a curve ball and he totally locked up the big right handed hitter. Two down. Number five, Chris Chenea. Strikeout number three for Balkum, and he hasn't walked anybody. The batter is Chenea. And now here comes I believe it's the pitching coach coming out. If I don't know, is that Scott? But at any rate, Balkum will come out of the game having done a very nice job. And we will have a pitching change. The new pitcher is left-hander Brian Moran, but a nice job by starter Logan Balkum, who comes to Tulsa from the Independent Atlantic League and does well in his first outing. A season high number of pitches. He threw 82 pitches. Logan Balkum went five and two thirds innings, allowing six hits, two runs, both earned, no walks, three strikeouts, and is responsible for the runner at third base, Lane Thomas. And so now here's Brian Moran to face Chris Chenea. And the left handers pitch, a side winding ball down low. Moran, one win, no losses, 7.04 ERA, making his seventh appearance. He has one save. Here's the delivery. Bends a curveball in there for a strike. Moran, seven and two-thirds innings pitch, 12 hits allowed and six runs all earned. Three walks, 12 strikeouts. From the stretch to the right-handed hitting Chenea. And a swing and a foul, slammed off to the right side, not a play. So the count now, one ball, two strikes to Chenea. Who is 0 for 2, two fly balls to center field. 2-1, to one, Springfield with the lead here in the top half of the sixth inning. Here's the pitch, swing and a foul, high in the air down the right field line and out of play. Still one ball and two strikes to Chenea. With two outs and a runner at third base. Brian Moran trying to come in and keep it a one run game. Here's the pitch. A slow ground ball towards shortstop. Ahmed charges in. He has it off balance throw right on line for out number three. Good play by Ahmed. And the inning is over. No runs. One hit, no errors, and one left on base. At the end of five and one half innings of play, Springfield two, Tulsa one. The Tulsa Drillers are trailing by a score of two to one. We go to the bottom of the sixth inning, and this game, very much unlike the first two games. First two games, the finals were eight, seven, and nine, eight, both in favor of the Drillers, and now this game is a two one score, and the Drillers have managed just two base hits off of native Oklahoma. Ryan Helsley, the young man from Cookson, Oklahoma, and Tahlequah in Northeastern State has accorded himself very well. One unearned run allowed and two base hits. And here in the sixth, Luke Rayleigh, DJ Peters, and Connor Joe to face the right-hander. And the first pitch is on the outside corner for a strike at 94 miles an hour to Luke Rayleigh. Rayleigh, the left-handed leadoff hitter for Tulsa, is on a six-game hitting streak. He's 0 for 2. He came into the game hitting 308. Now it's down to 304. The delivery swing and a high drive deep right field. Going back, Getzman. Getzman near the wall makes the catch. Oh my. He banged into the bullpen. 
gate and opened the gate up as he bashed into it to make the catch. The gate flipped open. But he got back there and made the grab. I would say that there might have been a chance had he not made the catch, it might have sailed over the wall. It's a good play by Grandin Getzman. One down. DJ Peters, the hitter. Helsley's pitch, swinging a foul straight back. So, Rayleigh's bid for a seven game hit streak in a game tying home run goes by the wayside. One down, nobody aboard. The drillers trailing two to one, and DJ Peters, the six foot six right handed hitter, takes a look at a ball down low, one and one. Peters has struck out twice, once swinging, once looking. Here's the 1 1 pitch. Swing and a high fly ball deep left field, but not deep enough. It wouldn't appear. A Rosarino waits on the warning track, makes the catch. That was a moonshot by DJ Peters and a fly to deep left. So a fly Third to the wall and right, and a fly to the warning track and left. But they're just two long outs, and the drillers trailing two to one. We'll have two outs, nobody aboard for Connor Joe. Joe walked to become the first base runner in the game for Tulsa in the fourth inning and later came in to score on a Sosa throwing error. Helsley's pitch, a little bit low for a ball. One ball, no strikes to Connor Joe. 0 for 1 in the game. The wind, here's the 1 0 Helsley pitch. Breaking ball in for a strike at 84 miles an hour. He has used that hard slider to very good effectiveness, Helsley, today. Kept Tulsa off balance. Like a kind of a hard curveball. Here's a swing and a foul straight back. Either that or it's that cutter that uh, Andrew Buckbinder, the broadcaster for Springfield, was telling me about. You got a fastball, a couple of two different fastballs, the four and the two seamer, a cut fastball, a curve, and a change. Here's the one two pitch swing and a high pop up right side of the infield and playable for Dykstra. He gives way to the second baseman Edmund and Edmund with the one hand grab and the inning is over. One two three inning for Helsley although Tulsa hit a couple near the wall. But it goes for nothing and we head to the seventh inning. The score is Springfield two Tulsa one. Tulsa trails by a score of two to one. Two runs, six hits, one error for Springfield. One run, two hits, two errors for the Drillers. We head to the top of the seventh inning for Springfield. Luke Dykstra. Then the pitcher's position with Ryan Helsley. And then Tommy Edmond facing left-hander Brian Moran, who came in and got the final out of the sixth. And by the way, kudos to Logan Balkum for a nice performance. Season high for him, 82 pitches. Here's the left-handers pitch, a curveball inside. And Balkum officially five and two-thirds inning, six hits, two runs, both earned, no walks, three strikeouts. Right now, though, he's on the hook for the loss unless this score flips. There's a fastball strike right down the middle to Dykstra. Dykstra singled in the third and was left-stranded, grounded out in the fifth. Moran from the stretch and a late swing foul off to the right. Dykstra is the son of Lenny Dykstra, the longtime player in the major leagues. Terrific infielder and leadoff hitter for the Mets, among others. 1 2 pitch high and tight. Now they're going to say, did they say it hit him? Evidently it struck him. The catcher, Hamlet Marte, has got his hands outstretched going, didn't touch him. Now manager Scott Hennessy is at the top step of the dugout wondering what. You know, we just got a little bit of a replay on it. Maybe we can get another. Pitch came high and tight. It's tough to tell on one of the replays we saw on MILB.com. It'd be interesting to look at it again. 
So Dykstra reaches on a hit batsman. And the first pitch high and outside as Helsley squared to bunt. Maybe it got Dykstra on the you know on the uniform. Might have just barely hit him. Here's the pitch inside and low ball squirts away, but Marte smothers it. No advancement. 2 0 the count. You know, if the ball comes in and hits you on the sleeve, hits your your uniform and not your that's still a hit batsman. So who knows, but Dykstra is awarded first. Here's the pitch, bunted out in front of the plate, fielded by the catcher Marte, flips to first to the second baseman Mora covering in time for the out. Successful sacrifice for Ryan Helsley. 2 4 on the sacrifice, and Dykstra goes to second. Helsley's doing it all. He is throwing a two hit, two to one game so far with six strikeouts and only one walk, and he's got a sacrifice bunt. Tommy Edmond, the batter, with a runner at second base and one down. Edmond is 0 for 3, struck out swinging in the first, fly to left in the third, reached on an error in the fifth. 2 to 1 is your score, Springfield leading. We're in the top half of the seventh inning. Here's the pitch, swing and a miss. And a breaking ball that came right in on the thumbs. No balls, one strike to Edmond. Right handed hitting second baseman. Urias is on deck. Two to one, Springfield. Here's the left-hander's delivery. Curveball again, and he yanks it foul left side. Oh, and that one jumped up into the stands in that first row, and two young players with gloves had it. <laughs> went off of both of their gloves and stayed and went back into playable territory. And I won't say what happened after that. Moran sets. Pitch to Edmond. Swing and a miss. Chewed him up with the 0 2 high fastball. Struck him out. Two down. Actually, I will say what happened next. The, the young kids tried to come up with that foul ball. Went off a couple of gloves. Went back onto the field. And a young kid quickly and stealthily jumped over the padded wall, snatched the baseball, and then jumped back in again. And I don't think any of the ushers saw it. And that's okay. Urias the batter. Pitch in the dirt for a ball. I would not suggest doing that if you're a fan, especially if you're an adult fan. Get you in some trouble. Do not jump onto the field. Urias is one for three. Popped out to second, grounded to short, and he is singled. Two to one score, Springfield leading two out runner at second here in the top of the seventh. Here's the pitch, breaking ball in there for a strike outside corner. And for a moment, I thought home plate umpire Gorman was not going to give that call because Marte kind of bobbled the pitch. He was trying to quickly snatch it out of his glove and maybe make a throw to second base and kind of juggled it a little bit. And the home plate umpire was undeterred and called it a strike. 1-1 one, one pitch. Slider inside and low. Good looking pitch, though. At 87 miles an hour. Had a little bit of had some teeth in that pitch now. <laughs> really good movement. Two and one count. The set. Here comes the two one delivery. Breaking ball strike inside corner. Moran is just pounding it on that inside corner with breaking stuff. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, runner at second. Two to one, Springfield lead. The check by Moran, and here's the pitch. Inside corner, strike three with an 88 mile an hour angling fastball. Nice job by Moran to pitch around the hit batsman to start the inning. No runs, no hits, no errors. One left. Springfield is stranded four through seven. We're in the middle of the seventh inning. Time for the seventh inning stretch, and your score is Springfield two, Tulsa one. Leading off the driller seven, left fielder, number 16, Zach Reeves. 
Tulsa is down by a score of two to one. Two runs, six hits, one error for Springfield. One run, two hits, two errors for the Drillers. We go to the bottom half of the seventh inning. Ryan Helsley. The right hander from Oklahoma. Here's the pitch. Outside corner strike. I keep wanting to see he's from Cooks in Oklahoma. And he's from Tahlequah. Went to Northeastern State. So if you're from Cookson, are you a Cooksonian? Like, you know, if you're from Tulsa, you're a Tulsa. Here's the pitch. There's a ground ball to the right side toward the hole. A diving effort as he smothers it. Edmund, the second baseman, made a brilliant play. Knocked down the ball and threw him out at first base. Wow. One down here in the seventh inning, and Angelo Moore is the bat. That was a really good play. That one looked toward, looked like it was going toward the hole and sliding into the hole between first and second was the second baseman. And he did a nice job knocking it down and getting the out. One down and Angelo Mora, the batter. Left-hander bunts it down the third baseline, but foul. Helsley came into this inning having thrown 82 pitches. He's been very good. In fact, his last outing against Arkansas, he threw 111. So it looks like they, they can let him go into the hundreds if if he's still effective. And he leads two to one here in the seventh. There's a breaking ball strike. He does have with Wagner. one complete he's game, and that was the recent game against Arkansas when he lost two to one. It was a doubleheader game, though. He only had to pitch six innings to get the complete game. 0-2 pitch, high and outside. And he is into territory here that he hadn't been all year. His, his season high innings pitched wise was six. Coming into today. So this is a new season high for him. Six and one-third innings. 1-2 one, pitch in the dirt, two and two. He did have one game in AAA this year, Ryan Helsley. Where he pitched for Memphis in the PCL, pitched uh, pitched very well, seven innings of four hit, one run ball, and was the winner. Mora is 0 for 2. Here's the pitch, a high hopper over the mound, charging second baseman Edmund comes up with a throw to first in time. That's two good plays by Tommy Edmund of the Springfield Cardinals defense. Two down, and Peter O'Brien the batter. No, but I was I, I bet somebody from Tahlequah could tell me. We were talking, you know, is, is Ryan Helsley a Cooksonian? And then if he's from Tahlequah, is he a Tahlequahian? Tahlequahian? Don't know how you would say that. No matter where he's from, Ryan Helsley has pitched well and leads 2-1 to one here in the bottom of the seventh inning with two outs, nobody aboard. Here's O'Brien. Mighty swing, and he fouls it straight back. No balls, one strike to Peter O'Brien. Struck out looking twice. There's a pitch inside for a ball. And O'Brien, of course, has the massive power. But also high risk, high reward. He has struck out a lot. He has struck out 38 times in 82 at-bats. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Breaking ball in there for a strike. And again, Helsley has used that hard curve or cutter, if you will, in the mid-80s to great effect, especially against the Tulsa Power hitters. Here's the 1-2. Breaking ball hit high in the air. Shallow center field. Thomas coming in. He looks into the Tulsa sky and makes the catch. In the seventh inning, no runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. We head to the eighth. The score is Springfield 2, Tulsa 1. 2-1 to one is your score in favor of Springfield as we go to the top of the eighth inning. Two runs, six hits, one error for the Cardinals. One run, two hits, two errors for the Drillers. And in the top of the eighth, number 12, Randy. Randy or Rosarina to lead it off, then Lane Thomas and Edmundo Sosa. Against left-hander Brian Moran. Curveball outside on the first pitch, and it's 1-0. and 
Moran in relief of Logan Balkum, who had his debut with the Drillers this year, his this year debut, if you will. He's a former Driller as well. Pitched for the Drillers in 2016. At any rate, Balkum came in and did a very nice job as the starter, but came out of the game trailing 2-1. A breaking ball in for a strike, 1-1. One one. Rosarina's had a good day. He is 2-3, for three, a double and a home run, and he's also grounded third. Moran's pitch, side-arming a fastball is a bunt down the first baseline. Actually toward second base, the second baseman, and it jumped over the head of Moran, and there'll be no play. It's a base hit. Center fielder number four, Lane. So a Rosarina with a nice job bunting it. Kind of down that first baseline, but he chopped it over the head of the pitcher. And once Moran couldn't get to it, there was no chance for second baseman Mora. Bunt base hit for a Rosarina. And here's Lane Thomas. The set, and here's the Moran pitch. Breaking ball in for a strike. Second bunt base hit in the game for Springfield. Urias had a bunt base hit in the fifth. Fortunately enough, Balkum was able to pitch around that. Runner is going. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. Throw to second, and he is out at second. Rosarina was trying to steal his sixth base of the year. Second baseman Mora took the good throw by Marte, tagged him out. They both went tumbling, and the reason we had to hold and wait was because the umpire never made the call. He was waiting to make sure that Mora had held on to the ball. And so when all of that played out, the out call finally came. It was evident that the ball and the tag beat the runner. The question was, would he hang on to it? There's a pitch in the dirt to Thomas, and the count is one ball and two strikes. One out and nobody aboard now for Springfield here in the top of the eighth inning with the Cardinals leading two to one. Bunt base hit by Rosarina, by the way, the seventh base hit for St. Louis for uh, the Springfield Cardinals. There's a pitch inside corner, struck him out on the one two. Good fastball. And again, the, the good fastball for Moran does not appear to top out at much more than 88, 89 miles an hour. But he has that just terrific curveball, and the off speed stuff just keeps you off balance. The upper 80s so fastball looks a lot faster when you're looking for soft stuff. Two down, and the batter is Sosa. And Mundo Sosa is 0 for 3. Two fly balls to left and a grounder to third. Here's the delivery. Breaking ball outside. From the stretch, Moran. And here's the pitch. Fastball inside, 2-0. and oh. Sosa in the series is 1 for 8. Tomorrow night, it's the final game of the four-game series. 7.05 first pitch, 6.50 airtime. Dennis Higgins will be back in the chair. Here's the pitch, swinging a high fly ball. Fairly deep right center, but playable. Peters, the center fielder, drifting to his left, and he makes the catch. That's it in the eighth inning. No runs, one hit, no errors, nobody left. At the end of seven and one-half innings of play, Springfield 2, Tulsa 1. Leading off, short stop, number one, Mike Ahmed. Bottom half of the eighth inning, it's 2-1 to one in favor of Springfield. Mike Ahmed, Hamlet Marte, and then the pitcher's position. That would be Moran, but you have to believe Moran having pitched, what, two and a third innings and has pitched great, might be taken out for a pinch hitter. Ryan Helsley hasn't been taken out for a pinch hitter yet, and he has pitched terrific ball. And he pumps in a strike, 0 1 to Ahmed, who is 1 for 2 in the ball game. There's a pitch down low in the dirt. And it's one ball, one strike to Ahmed, who had a single in the fifth inning. It's one of only two base hits against Helsley, who has allowed one unearned run. 
and he has thrown 95 pitches to this point. We mentioned that his season high is 111. 1-1 one, one pitch, high for a ball. I suppose it's possible he could pitch a nine-inning complete game, which in these days, especially in the minor leagues, is an absolute rarity. But there is a right-hander warming up in the Springfield bullpen. There's a swing and a foul straight back, and it's 2-2 two and two now to Mike Ahmed. Hector Mendoza is the right-hander warming up in the bullpen. Two to one, Springfield leading. Bottom half of the eighth inning amid the batter. Right-handed hitter. Here's the pitch, fastball low. Now it's three and two. Helsley has struck out six. He's walked one. He has been largely in command almost the whole way. The one run again was unearned on the throwing error by Sosa. And he has retired the last eight after the single by Ahmed. Three balls, two strikes. He turns on the rubber, and here's the Helsley delivery inside for a ball. He nearly got it on that inside corner, and the catcher held it there for a moment. But it missed. It was that mid-80s breaking ball we were talking about that Helsley has used to his advantage during this game, and that one just missed a, off of the inside corner. Lead off walk to a mid. Only the second walk given up by Helsley, and here is Hamlet Marte. The check by Helsley. And the pitch to Marte, squares to Bunt, bunts it down the first baseline, fielded by Dykstra, who tags Marte running down the first baseline. Successful sacrifice, three unassisted. Ahmed goes to second. And the drillers will have Tyler Colvin. Pinch hitting for the drillers, number 34, Tyler Colvin. Colvin he will pinch hit here. In the uh, eighth inning. On the season, he's two for five. Left-handed hitter. Here's the pitch, swinging a foul to the right side, right in front of the Tulsa dugout down that first baseline. Of course, Colvin with major league experience with the Rockies, the Cubs in the National League. The set, the 0 1 pitch, way outside for a ball. Colvin with 49 home runs in Major League play, including what was it, 18 for Colorado back in 2012? 2 to 1, Springfield leading here in the eighth. Here's the pitch to Colvin, swinging a foul straight back, 1 and 2. At second base is a Met. One out here in the bottom half of the eighth inning. A two to one Springfield lead as Ryan Helsley from Northeastern State University tries to hang on here in the eighth. The drillers have the tying run at second. Colvin calls time. One ball, two strikes. Tyler did not like the amount of time Helsley and Chenea were taking to decide on the pitch. Now we're set to go. Here's the set. And the one-two pitch to the left-hander. Here it comes. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Big strikeout for Helsley, and it's strikeout number seven. And now Luke Raley, the batter. Raley is 0 for 3. He might have a six-game hitting streak here on the line. And now here comes the manager of the Springfield Cardinals out of the dugout. Johnny Rodriguez comes out, and this may be it for Ryan Helsley. But we will see. We mentioned Helsley won 111 pitches in his last performance. 
Right now, it looks like he's at about 104. Yeah, 104, and he will come out of the game. So, we'll take a break. This is your call to the pit, brought to you by U.S. Cellular, the official wireless provider of the Tulsa Drillers. When U.S. Cellular is your provider, you can finally say goodbye to activation charges and other hidden fees for good. Visit a nearby U.S. Cellular store or uscellular.com to learn more. We take a time out. We'll talk about the reliever in a moment. Your score is Springfield 2, Tulsa 1, back in a month. Taking the mound for the Springfield Cardinals, number 35, Hector Mendoza. He goes seven and two-thirds innings, His clearly his high of the year. Two hits allowed. One run, it was unearned. He ended up walking two and striking out seven and is responsible for the runner at second base, Ahmed. And now Hector Mendoza comes in with an inherited runner that obviously he does not allow, want to allow to score here in the home half of the eighth inning. Now we talked about it in the pregame show, how each bullpen has had their Shall we say moment? Good and bad, actually. The Drillers bullpen was good in game one when they rallied from 8-1 down and one. But then last night gave up three in the, in the ninth inning to tie the game. There's a pitch on the outside corner for a strike to Rayleigh. And Springfield has been a little bit dicey with the bullpen in this series, most notably that first game when they blew the 8-1 lead. The set by the right-hander. Here's Mendoza's 0-1. Overhand fastball strike at the knees. Rayleigh doesn't look like he liked that call. Thought it was maybe low. Mendoza comes in with a 1-1 record, 1.76 ERA, his 14th appearance. He has three saves in five opportunities, and this would obviously qualify for a save opportunity if he were to continue on and pitch in the last inning. Rayleigh is 0-3. Here's the set by the right-hander. The 0-2 pitch, check swing high. One ball, two strikes. Mendoza is six foot four, 215 pounds, out of Havana, Cuba. He has just turned 24 years old. The set. Here's the one-two. Breaking ball, a little bit high. Two and two. DJ Peters on deck for Tulsa, trailing two to one in this game. The chance to knot things up with a runner in scoring position here with two outs in the bottom of the eighth inning. They're playing Rayleigh to pull. Here's the set. And the 2 2. Swing and a looper towards center field. Drops in for a base hit. Rounding third is a man. He's going to try to score. Here comes the throw. Out at home. And a great throw by Thomas, the center fielder. Scrambling to try to get to the plate. Was Mike Ahmed. Rayleigh gets a base hit to center. Lane Thomas cuts him down at home. The play goes eight, two. The inning is over. U.S. Cellular brings you the call to the bullpen. Now pitching for your Tulsa Drillers, number four, Andrew Isler. Isler, number four, now on the bottom. Pitcher into the game for the Tulsa Drillers, Andrew Istler. Istler is a 5'11", 175-pound right-hander out of Toledo, Ohio, and he enters the game replacing a very effective Brian Moran. Moran pitched two and one-third innings and allowed just the one base hit, no runs. He ended up walking none and striking out three. Nice job by Moran. 
pitcher of record right now for Tulsa's Logan Balkum, who did pitch effectively into the sixth inning. And there's a breaking ball strike from Isler to Grandin Getzman. Getzman, the leadoff hitter here in the Springfield ninth inning with Springfield leading 2-1. to one. Chenea, Chenea, I should say, and Dykstra to follow. Here's the pitch, overhand fastball high. One ball, one strike to Getzman. 0 for 3 in this game, but had two home runs in last night's game. A 1-1 delivery, breaking ball low and outside. Top of the ninth inning, 2-1, Springfield. Tulsa's managed only two hits. Springfield has seven. Here's the delivery, breaking ball outside. Now it's 3-1. and one. There's one other game going on in the Texas League, and that's being delayed right now in Springdale, Arkansas. Here's the pitch, swinging a high pop-up, left side foul territory. Connor Joe coming near the dugout of Springfield. He reaches up and makes an absolutely brilliant catch. I thought there was no chance he could get to that. He jackknifes at the top rail of the dugout on the padded rail and makes a brilliant lunging catch. It cannot get much better than that. We'll take a look at it on MILB.com. And a brilliant play. Connor Joe, as we mentioned, jackknifing across and just getting it in the web of his glove. Leaping toward and in the Springfield dugout. My goodness, that's a great play. And now here's a curveball to Chenea. And it's in for a strike 0 and 1. I don't care what level. You cannot make a better catch than that on a foul ball play. 0 and 1 pitch. High and outside, 1 and 1. I was going to mention the other game going on in Springdale in the Texas League. Northwest Arkansas leads Arkansas 5 4, bottom of the eighth, but they're in a rain delay, and you may may or may not know we had a rain delay at the beginning of this game did not start the game until about 12 30. there's a breaking ball misses inside two and one the count this game is scheduled to start at 11 05 it started at 12 31. there's a pitch in there for a strike two and two from isler andrew isler 1-0 record, 1.35 ERA, his fourth appearance for the Drillers. The set, here comes the 2-2. Breaking ball, bounced back off of the glove of the pitcher, but fielded by second baseman Mora, who flips to first in time. That play goes 1-4-3. Isler almost got his glove on it. Well, he did get his glove on it. He almost caught it. But it glanced off his glove, and first piece of the play cleaned up by Angelo Mora. Two down. Two to one. Springfield leading here in the top half of the ninth inning. Dykstra the hitter with two outs, nobody aboard. Here's the right-hander's pitch, swinging a foul straight back. On one. If you're looking ahead, D.J. Peters, Connor Joe, and Zach Rex, numbers two, three, four, scheduled for Tulsa at the bottom of the ninth. Luke Dykstra is one for two. Singled in the third, grounded out in the fifth, was hit by a pitch in the seventh. There's a swing and a foul ball right at the plate. We mentioned his dad, Lenny Dykstra, had a very good career as a leadoff man, mostly an infielder. Started with the Mets, played a lot of years with the Phillies. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Fastball high. One ball, two strikes. One and two the count with two outs in the ninth inning. Two to one, Springfield leading. Here's a swing and a high hopper third base way. Caught by Connor Joe, the third baseman, and he throws across in time, inning over. One, two, three inning for Andrew Isler, and let's see what the drillers can do in the bottom of the ninth inning. With the score, Springfield two, Tulsa one.
go to the bottom of the ninth inning. The Tulsa Drillers are trailing by a score of two to one. And it is DJ Peters, Connor Joe, and Zach Rex to face Hector Mendoza in relief of Ryan Helsley. Defensive substitution for Springfield. Blake Drake goes into right field, replacing Grandin Getzman. DJ Peters to lead it off is 0 for 3. Right-hander Mendoza sets. And here's the pitch. Breaking ball in the dirt low. One ball, no strikes. Also trailing 2 to 1 here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Mendoza came in and gave up a single to Raley, which might have tied the game except for the runner. Ahmed was thrown out at home. Pitch in there for a strike, one and one count. Mendoza from the stretch, and here comes the 1 1. Outside for a ball, 2 and 1. They wanted that one. They thought it was on the outside corner. So it's two balls and one strike to DJ Peters, who has struck out twice, and he has flied to left. He's on a four game hitting streak. The drillers have managed only two hits in this game. Here's the 2 1. Swing and a miss. A healthy cut, and the count is evened up at 2 and 2. Peters is tied for the team lead in home runs with eight. He is now hitting at 276. From the stretch, Mendoza. Here comes the 2-2 pitch. A breaking ball grounded to the left side and passed a diving third baseman and into left field. Base hit for Peters to lead off the ninth inning. Urias dove hard to his left and it's just over his gloves. So the drillers have something going to start things. Connor Joe, the batter. Joe is 0 for 2. Fly to center and pop to second. He's also walked. Came around to score on a throwing error by the shortstop for the only run for the drillers. Well, now Tulsa has four base hits. Here's the pitch to Joe outside for a ball. I had mentioned that moment ago Tulsa only had a couple of bases but it was actually three coming into the inning because of Rayleigh's base hit in the eighth inning and now it's four Joe the right handed hitter here's the pitch checks his swing inside for ball two two and out and will this be another game where one or the other team's bullpen falters at the end so far, that's what we've seen in the first two games. This one, though, different than the other two, and in, in that it's been a well-pitched game from beginning to this point. Two balls, no strikes. Here's the pitch. Swing and a ground ball left side fielded by Urias. Over to second to Edmund for one. Relay to first, double play. 5-4-3, double play. Turned by the Springfield defense. Two down, nobody aboard here in the ninth. The batter is Zach Rex. Number 16, Zach Rex. So the drillers down to their last out, trailing two to one. Rex is one for three. The right hander's pitch is a fastball right down the middle, but perhaps a little bit high. I don't know where that one was a ball, but evidently it was. One ball, no strikes. It's been a, really, honestly, it's been a good home plate by Jeff Gorman in this game. Home plate on. Here's the pitch foul back into the screen, one and one. One ball, one strike, two outs. Nobody aboard for the drillers here in the bottom of the ninth, trailing two to one. A 1-1 pitch, swing and a foul back into the netting, one and two. Rex playing in his sixth game for the Drillers. In this series, he is three for seven. The check, the Mendoza one, two, high and tight, two and two. Two to one, Springfield. Bottom half of the ninth inning. They look to capture their first game in this series. Game four is tomorrow night at 7.05 here at 1 Oak Field. 
The 2 2 pitch. Swing and a foul straight back. Stays alive. Still 2 and 2. Rex kind of looked backward after fouling that off, as if to say, that was a good pitch to hit, and I should have done something better with it. Two balls, two strikes from the stretch, Mendoza. And here comes the pitch. Way outside, three and two. On deck is Angelo Mora, who has a home run in this series. That coming last night. Three balls, two strikes. Two outs, nobody aboard for the drillers. From the stretch, Mendoza. And the 3-2 pitch. Swing and a line drive down the right field line, but he has yanked it foul. That may or may not have had home run distance because couldn't tell because it hooked so wildly at the end, but he hit it pretty well. Three balls, two strikes to Rex. Right foot on the rubber, Mendoza stares in, has the sign to the stretch position, and here comes the 3-2, swing and a high drive down the left field line, but that is twisting foul and out of play. And the count remains 3-2. Two. two runs in the fourth inning on back-to-back -back home runs by Rosarina and Thomas for Springfield, and Tulsa got a run in the fourth, an unearned run on a throwing error. That's been it. Two to one is your score. Both runs in the fourth inning. And we're in the bottom of the ninth. Springfield with the lead, looking to get the win. The set. Another 3-2 pitch. Swing and a foul back again. Good battle here by Zach Rex. Springfield looking to get to 20 and 18 on this first half season. And in so doing, would take the drillers to 20 and 18 as well. It's also right now in a one game lead in the north over Arkansas and Springfield from the stretch here comes another 3-2 pitch swing and a ground ball to the right side Edmund scoops it up and the second baseman flips to first in time and this ball game is over so Springfield defeats the drillers in a game very much unlike the first two a two to one final Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for joining us today here at One Oak Field. Our next game here will be tomorrow night, Thursday, May 17th at 7 p.m. It's another My 4-1 Buck Night. $1 beers, sodas, and hot dogs. Plus the first 1,000 fans receive a Corey Seager bobblehead. Tickets to that game and any Drillers game are available at TulsaDrillers.com. Thanks again for joining us today. Have a safe drive home.